Hello, this video is entitled The Cognitive Aspects of the Hand-Sewn Two-Layer Balanastomosis. This is the first part in a two-part series. In the first part, we'll be discussing the cognitive aspects, and in the second video, we'll be discussing the technical aspects, so stay tuned for that one. My name is Edward Shipper. I'm one of the Surgical Education Fellows at the Goodman Surgical Education Center, and this video was prepared with the assistance of Dr. Brendan Visser, one of the staff hepatobiliary surgeons at Stanford Hospital Center. Let's review some goals and objectives. The goal of this video is to understand the cognitive aspects of performing a hand-sewn two-layer bowel anastomosis. After watching this video, the learner will be able to define bowel anastomosis, use the nomenclature to describe bowel anastomoses, list indications for bowel anastomosis, describe the anatomy of the bowel wall, describe the different types of surgical techniques used to complete a bowel anastomosis, and discuss and illustrate the technical steps of a hand-sewn two-layer bowel anastomosis. A bowel anastomosis is a surgical technique that creates a connection between two loops of bowel that were not previously connected. Most commonly, this connection is used to restore intestinal continuity that was disrupted as part of an earlier surgical maneuver or from trauma. Anastomoses are described in terms of the orientation of the two loops of bowel used to connect them. There are three possible orientations. End-to-end -end anastomosis, side-to-side -side anastomosis, and end-to-side anastomosis. Anastomoses are also described in terms of the names of the two loops of bowel that are connected. In this system, two prefixes for each anatomic segment of intestine are paired with the suffix ostomy which means opening. Thus, a loop of duodenum attached to a loop of jejunum would be called a duodeno-jejunostomy. Ilium attached to colon would make an iliocolostomy. Jejunum attached to jejunum would create a jejuno-jejunostomy. So why do we do balanastomoses? The indications for balanastomosis can be conceptualized using two broad categories operations requiring resection of diseased bowel, and operations requiring division and rearrangement of healthy bowel as part of a planned surgical procedure. Operations that require resection of diseased bowel disrupt the normal linear continuity of the gastrointestinal tract. In these cases, a bowel anastomosis is used to restore intestinal continuity. There are numerous etiologies of diseased bowel, including tumors, benign or malignant, obstruction, ischemic bowel secondary to vascular compromise, inflammatory bowel disease, and trauma. Conversely, some operations require division and rearrangement of healthy portions of bowel. This maneuver is characteristic of operations that rearrange the bowel in a nonlinear fashion by creating a rule limb that is used to alter the flow of biliopancreatic secretions. We will not discuss the specifics of rule limbs in this video. They are presented as an example of another type of indication for bowel anastomosis. Before we begin a discussion of the technical aspects of bowel anastomosis, it is important to describe the anatomy of the bowel wall. The bowel is composed of four concentric layers surrounding the bowel lumen. The innermost layer closest to the bowel lumen is the mucosa. Moving outwards, the next layer is the submucosa. This layer is the strength layer of the bowel. In other words, this layer has the greatest tensile strength and is a critical layer suited for holding staples or sutures. The next layer <clears throat> is the muscularis propria. The outermost layer is the serosa. In the nomenclature of bowel anatomy, the two outermost layers, the serosa and the muscularis propria, are sometimes described together as a single seromuscular layer. The two innermost layers of mucosa and submucosa are sometimes described as the mucosal layers. As we will see, this concept of inner layers and outer layers will be important when we conceptualize the techniques of bowel anastomosis. In the second video describing the technical aspects of bowel anastomosis, we will present a video demonstration of a bowel anastomosis that uses a bowel model whose bowel wall layers are color-coded. In this model, the seromuscular layer is skin-colored, the submucosal layer is red, and the mucosal layer is pink. 
Bowel anastomoses can be completed using a variety of surgical techniques. In general, these techniques can be arranged into two broad categories, stapled anastomoses and hand-sewn anastomoses. Stapled anastomoses use a variety of stapling devices to divide and then reconnect the layers of bowel wall. Hand-sewn anastomoses require the surgeon to divide the bowel and then place sutures to reapproximate the layers of the bowel wall of the associated bowel loops. If the individual layers of bowel wall are reapproximated using one series of sutures, the technique is described as a one-layer anastomosis. If the individual layers of bowel wall are reapproximated using two series of sutures, the technique is described as a two-layer anastomosis. Which technique is used for any particular bowel anastomosis is a matter of surgeon preference and technical feasibility. No randomized controlled trials have shown any definitive benefit of one technique over the other in terms of typical outcomes used to describe the success of the anastomosis, like leak rate or stricture rate. Nevertheless, surgeons should be familiar with all three techniques in order to be prepared for any clinical scenario. In this video, we will review the technical steps of a hand-sewn two-layer anastomosis in great detail. We will not discuss stapled anastomoses or hand-sewn one-layer anastomoses any further. In order to make sure that we are all on the same page, let's take a minute to orient ourselves to the conceptual model we will be using to understand the anatomic relationships of our bowel anastomosis. In this model, the surgeon plans to perform a side-to-side -side anastomosis. The patient is lying supine on the operating table. We will use the standard anatomic terminology with respect to the patient. The model is being viewed from the surgeon's point of view who is standing on the right side of the operating table. The patient's posterior aspect is closer to the floor of the operating room, and the patient's anterior aspect is closer to the ceiling of the operating room. Imagine that the surgeon is looking into the operative field at the anterior aspect of the bowel and has identified a loop of bowel with a lesion. The surgeon has cut on either side of the lesion in order to isolate and remove the diseased segment of bowel. The open ends of bowel are sealed off and the bowel is now in discontinuity. Both ends of bowel are brought towards the midline and laid side by side. An enterotomy, or cut in the bowel, is made through the anterior wall of each loop of bowel. Conceptually, each enterotomy creates an I-shaped defect in the bowel defined by two corners at the right and left and two edges, one superior and one inferior. In the same way that a book is closed, these two enterotomies will be brought together by folding anteriorly towards the transverse plane that separates them. As a result, the two I-shaped defects will be superimposed to create a single new connection between the two loops of bowel. By virtue of the folding, the edges of the enterotomies will now be oriented anteriorly and posteriorly. If you work backwards, when the enterotomies were originally made and the book was open, so to speak, you will see that the two edges of the different enterotomies closest to one another represent the posterior edges of the future anastomosis and the two edges furthest from one another represent the anterior edges of the future anastomosis. Take the time to understand this conceptual model before proceeding. Being able to make cognitive sense of the anatomic orientation of the anastomosis, in particular the anterior and posterior relationships of the enterotomies, is critical to performing a successful technical anastomosis. And that concludes our discussion of the cognitive aspects of the hand-sewn two-layer bowel anastomosis. You are now ready to proceed to the second part of our series, the technical aspects of the hand-sewn two-layer bowel anastomosis.